Hey everyone, you know how people say you shouldn't hire family or you shouldn't hire a friend to be an employee? I totally get it. That's a road that I've went down and I completely totally get it. But I'm running into a similar set of circumstances when having fans for customers and customers for fans. It's not too big of a deal, but it does cause somewhat of an issue because some of you think really, really, really highly of me. Um, I'm on YouTube showing people how to do some of this stuff. You look at it, you try to do what I do, completely, totally mutilate it and then it gets sent to me as no backlight. So whenever I receive this thing for no backlight, I look at it and go, Gah. and in some cases I have to turn it away because it is just too screwed up. You know, I don't, I don't know what all's wrong with it. And whenever that happens, you as a fan thinking I'm like, you know, up, up here, it's gonna get sent out there and get fixed. Well, the reality of it is on these undisclosed prior repair attempts, whenever I get under the hood and look at it and it is just completely mutilated, there's no way that I can invest five hours of my time whenever at the end of the road is a big fat maybe. Right now I have 90 devices in queue and whenever something comes in that's that's completely mutilated like that, I just, my, my hands are tied. I can't spend five hours on it if at the end of the road is a big fat maybe. So what I've got in front of me here today, and also before I get started on this, I would like to say that what I'm gonna show you here is something that I learned directly from iPad Rehab. So for the four or five of you that watch my channel that don't already subscribe to iPad Rehab, I highly suggest that you go have a look at the iPad Rehab channel because they publish some really, really excellent content. And this right here is something that I would have never figured out if it had not been for Jessa doing a stream on this specific problem. And I had ways of tinkering with it and screwing with it, but I didn't realize what it was that I was missing. And this is something that I learned from iPad Rehab. So what I've got here, this is an iPhone 6S that has a very, very important line shorted to ground. I'm gonna switch this over so that you can see what is on my bench. And right here, we've got an iPhone 6S with some sort of you know, wires coming out of it. And I'm gonna show you what it is that I did here. Now, this is something that I have began checking on every single iPhone 6S that comes in here. I check this whenever they are liquid damaged, and I check this whenever they have a connector damage, anything, no image. I go straight for this first, because if this is a problem, then it is an automatic no fix for me. Now, I do suspect that there are some ways around this, but who has time to work around this bullshit? So, let's go ahead and turn the meter on so that you can see what I'm seeing. Come on, meter. Oh. I do miss the old version of Open Broadcaster. There were just there were some things that it did better. So there we go. There's the meter. I'm gonna switch this over to continuity mode. It's not reading. Let's restart RS232. There we go. Yay! Okay, there's with my probes touched together, and I get one ohm, so you can safely assume that one ohm is zero ohms. So what I do is I count up the side of the connector. I put my black probe on ground and I count up the side of the connector. I go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. <clears throat> and on number seven, wait, 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 did I count wrong? Oh yeah, that's right, because I already severed it, okay? So can I even show you? I've, 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 bumped, I've bumped it out of place. Um, so let me switch you over to screen capture here and let's pull up an iPhone 6S. And we're gonna drill down here on the connector and we're gonna go up and look at the seventh pin up. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And that's the wrong one. We actually wanted pin six. So six pins up is this line here ap to lcm reset con l and what i run into is that this line gets shorted to ground on this particular phone we had 20 ohms to ground on one two three four five six right there which right now it is open because i have pulled our little inductor out so let me see if i can rake this wire aside and just i'm going to get down in here and poke at this board and try to get a connection on that And I don't think I can. I'm also not going to mutilate it. So just take my word for it. Whenever I check that line, we got 20 ohms to ground. 20 ohms to ground there is shit because you should get 100,000 ohms to ground there. Now, this is a line that goes from the CPU to the display, and it is involved in signaling. So what I've done here, 
let's get in a little closer. This line comes off of this pin. It goes through this inductor down into the board and directly to the CPU. There is nothing else in the way here. Right here up under the CPU and the 100,000 ohms to ground that you normally read is R4200. That's a 100K resistor. So when you check that line, you should get 100,000 ohms to ground. But whenever you get much, much, much less than that, you wind up with an iPhone 6S that will not power on the screen. So what I've done here, since I know I have a short to ground on this side of the inductor, this side of the line is shorter to ground. I know it's not this resistor because I've tried pulling that off of a, a few of them now. So by removing this inductor, we actually sever the short from the CPU side away from the display, which leaves us open game to play here. Now this is a line that normally has 1.8 volts on it, off or on, and thanks to iPad Rehab, I understand how to manipulate this and, and make it work. So what I've done here, I'm going to switch you back over to microscope. Now this is a data recovery job. I didn't do this for repair, but if we zoom right in here, you'll see what I've done here. I have severed get the microscope back on here so you can see that come on now one day I'll learn wait I am on microscope <laughs> okay so I have removed the inductor and it looks like I even got rid of the resistor on this one um, so what I've done is I've soldered a wire here and I've soldered a wire here and what that does for me is that gives me a spot to put 1.8 volts in here and it leaves me a spot to get 1.8 volts because right here is PP1V8CON. We've got 1.8 volts available right here and we need 1.8 volts here. Now it's not an exact science. You're not gonna just hook 1.8 volts up to this thing and get it to get an image on the screen. It, it, it won't happen. So the way we're gonna do this, I'm gonna try to demonstrate this. I am gonna go ahead. Now also what I've done here, I'll show you under the microscope. I've taken, so these wires are soldered on. Yeah, right there. This wire is going to carry 1.8 volts to here. And so that I can tinker with the signaling, I have one of those wires soldered here. And then I have the other wire soldered onto this one right there. Right there next to my big crack. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and connect these two together. We're going to take and hook my test lead there to there and that is putting 1.8 volts into our AP to LCM reset line. We're going to kick the mic microscope aside and I'm going to give you my hands right here. Okay. So now whenever I originally did this I used an HDMI image dongle to be able to tell when the phone was up, when the screen was locked, when it wasn't locked and Without that, it is really, really difficult to tell. It, it really is, because this is a finicky, really finicky operation. So I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna hook my charged battery here. I know this battery is charged. I'm gonna hook that up. I'm gonna go ahead and plug in a lightning connector here to prompt this thing to boot. Okay? And we're gonna wait until this thing gives us a nice connect tone Dun, 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 dun. And we're waiting for my desktop to register a connect tone. Let's turn on desktop audio so that Open Broadcaster can hear it. It's on. Assuming it's actually booting. Surely I'm just being impatient, right? <clears throat> okay, we'll keep waiting. All right, there's our connect tone. So at this point, this phone should be a lock screen. I'm gonna push the button to turn the screen off. 
Now I'm going to push the button to turn the screen on and at the second I do, we're going to put this thing into a reset state which is L. I'm going to screen on and then drop the drop the wire. All right, no success. Hit the button again, connect the wire. I'm going to hit the button, drop the wire. This was a really fun data recovery because it was just, you know, I had the image first and then I realized I didn't have a passcode so I had to wait on a passcode for this phone. And I actually got image before right at the second that I disconnected it. Okay, no luck yet. I think probably the right thing to do here would be to hook this up to a test phone and see what that signal is supposed to look like. But who has time to do things the right way? Jeez. All right, so we're going to Assume the screen is asleep. Wake it. Oh, it, it woke that time on its own. Okay. All right, now we have this reset line disconnected. What happens if we, and we also have working. Oh, finicky, look at it fading out, okay. Oh, some really weird stuff. Look at it slowly fading out. All right, what happens if we hook it up? All right, so with that hooked up, we got a nice bright screen, and we're ready for a passcode. So I don't really have any set pattern there that I stuck to. Can you actually see the screen? I don't know if you can see that or not. Um, but basically what I've done is I've, I've fiddled with this signal. Let's, let's disconnect it and look at it go dim automatically, and the screen just slowly starts to fade to black, and touch don't work instantly. Now I can tell you, whenever I did this data recovery, I did the whole thing with that line disconnected. And and there you go. So you're going to run into this. Like if you've got iPhone 6s that come in for connector damage, um, before replacing that connector, check that AP to LCM reset line because you might go through the trouble of replacing that entire connector and then be completely stuck because you can't really make it work. Now, I think you could probably come up with some sort of a micro timing circuit to where there's like a delay uh, because this does seem to be delayed. Like if I wake the screen disconnect or wake the screen connect, I can actually trigger this thing to light up the screen compared to if I just hook it up and leave it hooked up, it, it'll, it'll never light up the screen. So um, this is a little bit of a please bro solution. I'm not taking any credit for this because this is something, like I said, I learned directly from iPad Rehab. I'm gonna link the stream where this was actually there because I seen it and was like, oh, I was so excited to see iPad Rehab doing a, a video on this problem because I had already ran into it a half a dozen times and it's just like, no fix, no fix, no fix. But to realize that data recovery is entirely possible, it's totally sweet. So um, Jessa, thank you, that's really awesome. This is actually the first data recovery that I did using this method and whenever I got this to work, I was just like, I was so excited. Now on the stream, I don't think on the stream, I don't think she was successful, not because she didn't do it, but because she had other constraints. She had to leave the shop and didn't have time. But underneath that stream, um, she was nice enough to comment and explain to everybody exactly what she had done to get it working. And, and that's what I used to figure this out. So um, totally cool. Totally awesome. This is a little bit of a please bro solution for a no image on an iPhone 6S, but I'm telling you, don't do this. Unless you take a multimeter and you count these pins on the left and you get up here on AP to LCM reset con L, or you know even over, over here on it, either side, unless you get here and verify that you have less than 100,000 ohms of resistance here, typically less than 20, like this phone that I'm working on, it had 20 ohms of resistance. But unless you verify that this line is shorted on the CPU side, please, please, please do not do this because it's, it's it has nothing to do with your problem. This is a specific situation where this line gets shorted to ground inside the CPU or somewhere on the way. 
and it's a really really ugly situation i could see also the possibility that sometimes it could actually be r4220 that's giving you a pull to ground because one side of it 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 is ground but i haven't ran into that yet all i've ran into whenever this sucker is shorted to ground is it's the line going to the cpu so um, that is going to be it for this video i hope you all learned something I know I did whenever I watched Jessa do this, and I was just really, really thrilled. So um, I will see you next time, everybody. Have a good day. Thanks for watching.